So Flat Earth is essentially just a cult full of very ignorant people. And as a result, what you find is that most of their content involves simply repeating the same things over and over again. One of the topics they like to constantly repeat false information about is the vacuum of space. They actually believe the vacuum of space quite literally works like a vacuum cleaner because they don't understand that all it is is an, an empty space that has no matter in it. It has no force. Generally what they tend to, to talk about is the idea that because the atmosphere is pressurised it can't exist next to a vacuum without some kind of solid barrier. Starting with two examples from Flat Earthers, Mark Sargent and Dell from Behind the Learning Curve. We're going to look at some video clips that demonstrate the kind of propaganda that Flat Earthers like to put out regarding vacuums. As well as one clip that they actually deny and which they claim is propaganda. Following on from that I'm going to show another series of clips all involving tests in a vacuum chamber. Most of them come from the channel The Action Lab and I would highly recommend that anybody who isn't already subscribed to that channel go and do that. Once I'm done showing all those clips I'm going to come back and we're going to quickly go over them all and point out the one thing that ties everything together and shows how wrong this idea is that vacuum is a force. Here's another thing that, that I've got a problem with. They say they're going up into this vacuum of space, right? So for me, we live in a pressurised gaseous environment and that's, they're saying that's a vacuum. There's no solid barrier between them. Yet we go to physics and everyday practicality again, I'm sure you'll concur here. In order to have two opposing pressure systems next to each other, you need to seal them. But you know how they would equilibrate. Even a low level vacuum can overcome gravity here on the surface. In building molecule free chambers for the manufacturing of electronics, a series of massive pumps are needed to create a 99% vacuum. That's negative nine tor. And for the remaining 1%, horsepower isn't enough. It can only be achieved by a chemical leaching process. That being said, how is the negative 10 tor vacuum force of space not ripping off the atmosphere of this world? The testing started just normally, like they all do. Uh, and Jim was at a vacuum in a spacesuit. With all the air sucked out, all that protected him was his pressurized suit. Then something happened. I heard over the headset that he was losing suit pressure. The tube pressurizing his suit had become disconnected. He was in serious danger. There really wasn't any feeling. It was just happening so fast, you know, trying to get the chamber back to a safe pressure and Jim to a safe pressure was inside the suit. As I stumbled backwards, I could feel the slime on my tongue starting to bubble just before I went unconscious. And that's kind of the last thing I remember. Come on, you melon farmer. This is NASA's space power facility near Cleveland, Ohio, and it is the world's biggest vacuum chamber. It's used to test spacecraft in the conditions of outer space, and it does that by pumping out the 30 tons of air in this chamber until there are about two grams left. There's a near perfect vacuum inside. Release. Okay, we're at negative 0.75 atmospheres.
fly. Okay, styrofoam pendulum in air. Three, two, one. Okay, styrofoam pendulum in a vacuum. Turn off our pump. Three, two, one. So, I'm gonna turn it off now and see if we've got a good vacuum to try this experiment. All right, so hopefully, well, I'll tell you what, you make a prediction before I do it. So there's no air in there now, and let's see if you're correct with your prediction. Three, two, one. There you go. This is the air that was dissolved in the liquid. At lower pressure, it dissolves out of the liquid and back into the atmosphere. And so this is not boiling yet. So we're now at less than 0.1 atmospheres, way beyond the atmosphere at Mount Everest. And you can see it's rapidly boiling now. Okay, so let's look back over these clips and we'll point out the glaringly obvious that escapes flat earthers every single time. So in the NASA test we can see inside the chamber and there's various cables, pieces of apparatus and so on and nothing is affected by the vacuum. Everything stays positioned exactly where it is. The astronaut is obviously able to withstand the vacuum because he's just standing there and the suit isn't being ripped from his skin. The problem comes from the decrease in atmospheric pressure. The Mythbusters episode is the odd one out amongst all the clips because it isn't performed inside a vacuum chamber. But those of us who don't have a problem with physics understand that the reason the tank collapses is because of the force of the atmospheric pressure on the outside when the air is evacuated from the inside although Mythbusters actually had to damage the structural integrity of the tank before it would collapse, which of course, if flat earthers were correct, shouldn't have been necessary because the power of the vacuum should have been able to collapse it. Again, in the bowling and ball and feather test, none of the equipment inside the large chamber has any problem surviving the supposed power of the vacuum it's contained within even though there are small springs and pieces of metal. Neither the bowling ball or the feather are being ripped off their mounts. The feather, a very light, fluffy article, isn't remotely affected, it isn't being stripped apart, because there's nothing there to affect these objects. The, the crane that they're attached to, the cables supporting it, the box that the bowling ball lands on, etc, etc. None of these things are even remotely affected by being in the largest vacuum chamber in the world. The eggs in the vacuum chamber by Action Lab are actually a perfect example of just how wrong flat earthers are about this. Obviously, eggs are very thin and fragile and nothing happens to them while they're sitting in the vacuum. They don't get moved, they don't get rocked around, the shells stay intact and even the shell that has a puncture in it, which is one of the arguments that flat earthers will use when they're talking about holes in the space station or a hole in an astronaut's suit, etc. There's just a slow leak. There's no disastrous explosion. In the boiling water example, nothing happens to the glass. It isn't rocking around. It doesn't shatter. It's just a common household item. But while the water boils, which is known to be caused by the lack of atmospheric pressure, the object holding the water remains intact and doesn't even move. With the spray cream in the vacuum chamber, the cream remains on the plate that it's put on. The plate stays where it is, it doesn't shatter. The cream doesn't get drawn up and splattered all around the sides of the bowl. It just stays where it is, and as the atmospheric pressure reduces, then it begins to expand. Similarly, the way a balloon would expand is it gets higher in the atmosphere. With a can of coke, we have the reverse situation to the Mythbusters test. You, you have a vessel which contains pressure and once the pressure on the outside of the vessel is reduced that's when the pressure inside causes a rupture but of course once it does rupture there's no other damage done the lid pops from the force that's been generated inside the liquid temporarily hits the top of the chamber but then because of gravity which they deny everything behaves normally and heads to the bottom of the chamber and the very thin aluminium can 
now that its structural integrity has been completely ruined, remains fully intact and doesn't cave in, bend or get ripped apart. The example of the flies in the vacuum chamber has to be one of the most perfect examples of just how wrong flat earthers are about this, because clearly being in the vacuum chamber does not affect the flies. The lack of atmosphere prevents them from being able to use their wings, but they are otherwise unaffected. They're alive, they're walking and crawling around. There's nothing wrong with them at all. Obviously, if flat earthers were correct about vacuum having a force, these tiny, soft little bugs would never be able to survive. They would be ripped to shreds and explode all over the vacuum chamber. But it doesn't happen. They're perfectly fine. With the pendulum example, we've got the same issue that I've pointed out with a couple of the other examples at the beginning. None of the equipment inside the chamber is even remotely affected by this supposed powerful vacuum. The styrofoam block remains attached and it doesn't get ripped apart. The tiny thin wire that the pendulum is supported on doesn't break. And his method for beginning the pendulum swing is to hold it against the side of the chamber through the use of a simple small magnet. Which again, if there was any power in this vacuum chamber, it's highly unlikely that this small magnet would be able to withstand the force that's pulling on the block and the pendulum to rip it away from the wall of the vacuum chamber. None of this happens because there is no power. The only effect of this test is the change in resistance due to a lack of atmosphere. Once again with the miniaturised ball and feather, none of the equipment inside the bell chamber here is remotely affected by this supposed power of the vacuum. The small ball and feather are just balanced on a hinge plate, there's nothing to keep them in place, so if there was power in the vacuum as the atmosphere is being drawn away, they would come flying off. The hinge itself would get ripped apart. It would be impossible to have this kind of setup if there was any power in this vacuum. Again, nothing is affected. So looking back at the, the second example of boiling water from Action Lab, there is the fact that the water itself remains on the bottom of the chamber. It's very easy to move water, it's light, it's malleable. It takes very, very little to produce force or motion in water. And yet it stays on the bottom of the chamber, completely unaffected by the vacuum. However, it does start to boil due to the lack of atmospheric pressure again. And you can even see small droplets stuck to the side of the chamber, which would never be able to resist the supposed power of a vacuum. So over and over again, we can see that this supposedly powerful force has no effect on anything contained inside a vacuum chamber. Anytime a flat earther tells you that a vacuum has power, all you need to do is look not at any specific vacuum chamber test, but at any vacuum chamber test. Because that's one thing they all have in common, no matter what the nature of the test is. Everything inside the chamber remains completely unaffected by the vacuum and the only changes we see can always be attributed purely to the change in the amount of atmospheric pressure. So if everything that's been pointed out so far still isn't enough on its own, then we have an example again from the Action Lab. The experiment you're about to see involves placing a glass over some burning matches which changes the density of the air inside the glass, causing it to draw water up inside. He then goes on to evacuate the chamber to demonstrate that the effect that you're seeing has to do with atmospheric pressure. So this one test demonstrates the physics involved and completely undermines the idea that flat earthers have. So let that play and enjoy. Sucking up the water. Okay, so you can see how much water is sucked up into there. Again, I keep saying sucked up, but what's really happening is the atmospheric pressure pushed the water up inside of there. Oh, it's going back down. <laughs> okay, so our water's boiling inside of there. Let the air back in, 
And what should happen is now it's going to push the water back up into the glass. Okay, letting the air back in. Three, two, one. <laughs> so guys, that's another piece of ignorant flat earth mythology dealt with again. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.